In this video, I taste Moonlight White Tea and I explain you a little bit about the history and the production of this unusual white tea. I will also look into why it is called Moonlight White Tea and also which are the main differences between it and the more classic and we can say also more popular white tea from Fooding. Let's jump into it. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. And if you're new here and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skill, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. By the way, if at any point of time while watching the video you're also liking it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So, Moonlight White Tea. This is the tea I want to drink uh, with you today and before we start let's uh, uh, give you a little bit of uh, information about this tea. First of all the name, um, it is uh, Yue Guanbai which means uh, moonlight uh, white tea in uh, Chinese. It is uh, a tea that was uh, harvested in spring uh, 2018 and uh, uh, it comes from uh, Fengqing which is uh, a, um, a region and a city in uh, the Linsan prefecture in uh, Yunnan, China. It is uh, made from the cultivar that is called uh, uh, Jingu uh, Da Bai Cha and uh, um, what as we can say, this particular picking here that we have selected is made of uh, buds only. You find also additional information about uh, this tea in the description box just below uh, the video. So the tea was actually, the production of this tea was started about 200 years ago in Yunnan uh, before actually even uh, black tea production was started in that uh, uh, province uh, of China. And uh, why it is called uh, Moonlight White Tea? There are two different uh, stories that explain the name. The first one is that, uh, um, well, let's have a look first at the, at the leaves. So you see that uh, the leaves are actually um, quite uh, whitish. Yeah? Uh, in particular, we say these are only buds. So the buds are white because uh, the hair on the buds is also white. However, uh, what you cannot see in this particular picking because it's only buds is uh, the fact that the leaves, when uh, they uh, are processed, they turn black. So uh, lower grades where they have both buds and leaves as a mixture of uh, the white color of the buds and the black color underneath of the leaves and of the stems. And this is why having this white on dark uh, inspired or might have inspired the name of the tea saying moonlight white tea, so like a, a moon in the background of the dark sky. Now I say this is only one of the story, I will tell you soon uh, more, uh, more about that. But uh, uh, first of all, let's, uh, uh, let's have a look at the, at the tea. So the, um, try to, to pick up the, the smell of the, of the dry leaves. It has like like typical for uh, white tea, it reminds me of hay, but at the same time it has uh, a kind of um, wilderness to it. It's maybe I could say wild hay would be would be a good match. Yeah, I would say so. The results is slightly um, sour taste that reminds me a little bit of sour mushrooms. Here I have about uh, three grams of leaves. This is what I usually uh, um, usually use for uh, as a standard for my um, my tasting when I want to find out the taste of a tea. So I will use this guy one that is about uh, 85 to 90 milliliters of water under the lid. Put my three grams and do um, a quick rinse first. Water is at about 90 degrees centigrade. Mm. 
This way I warm up the guy one, I warm up the, the cup uh, and I can also smell the fragrance of the wet leaves. More intense, there is no hay anymore and a slightly uh, floral fragrance to it. Oh, I realized I forgot uh, the waste container for the for the wastewater. I go to grab it and I will be back with you. So, here I am. Hmm. It's interesting that in the bowl, the um, uh, the fragrance is more clearly floral, actually. And in the wet leaf, directly on, when, when you really smell the leaves, it reminds me of uh, the, um, the undergrowth in the, in the forest, but rather in another season. Now it's winter, I would rather say it is a, a spring and more lively uh, undergrowth. So, let's steep it. Uh, I will do a 45 seconds steep to start, more or less. And let me cook. Uh, I will boil again the water. All right, so we said uh, um, before that uh, um, the tea is... Uh, um, the reason of why it is called this way is because of the white buds on the uh, dark background. There is also another story to it uh, uh, that is more a legend maybe and it goes like that. It says that uh, um, young ladies uh, uh, go out to pick the leaves of Yue in, uh, um in the middle of the night and they dry it, the leaves uh, under the moonlight before the sun rises. So this means that the leaves have never seen the sun, uh, they see only the moon, and that's why they are called uh, Moonlight uh, White. Now, which of the two stories uh, um, is the right one? Um, who knows, I will leave it to you. Pick one, the one you like the better. Either you have the young leaves, the young ladies uh, picking the leaves, or you have the white buds on the dark background. But as a matter of fact, today production is different. There are no uh, young ladies going out at night to pick up the leaves. Uh, the tea is rather picked uh, very early in the morning. And uh, um, yeah, sometimes even before the sun rises and when the leaves are still covered by dew. And then they are dried indoor uh, in uh, rooms that are kept relatively warm at about uh, 30 degrees uh, centigrade. So they still don't see the sun, that for sure. But uh, yeah, it's not everything done overnight. And this is one of the main reasons, uh, the main differences also with respect to the white tea from fooding. The typical characteristic of the white tea from fooding, it is that it is sun-dried. And it's pretty peculiar to uh, that uh, region, Fujian. So um, if you want, there are other differences that we'll, we will look, but if you want to spot a very clear and uh, unique one is that uh, white tea from Yunnan, Moonlight White, is dried indoor without the sun, while the white tea from Fuding is dried under the sun, which is interesting because actually in Yunnan, Puer is dried under the sun. So yeah, there is, a, there is a little bit of contradiction there between what is usually done in Yunnan for Puer and what is usually done for white tea. Let's see how this tea tastes. Mm. I have to say the texture is, um, you know, you have a little bit of this fuzzy air uh, also in the brew and so it has a velvety touch to it in the mouth and uh, you kind of feel a little bit uh, that uh, um, there's this tiny hairs that are dissolved in the liquid, yeah.
Mm. It's still very light. I would say it's a medium body. It's not too light. It's not like a very pale green tea. It has a little bit of substance, but it's still very light and there's a, a slightly um, buttery touch to it. Go for another steep, one minute, a little bit longer. So while we wait that, uh, uh, let's speak about uh, another uh, difference between uh, the um, fooding by cha uh, and uh, the Bai Cha from Yunnan, the Moonlight. Another difference is the appearance of the leaves, and this helps you also in uh, uh, recognizing them one for the other. Uh, it hasn't been, uh, um, uh, I thought already happened a few times that I saw uh, Yue Guan Bai be sold as white tea, and since probably the seller didn't know where it came from, they just uh, say it comes from fooding because it is so much more popular but you can certainly recognize uh, if uh, the leaves are not from uh, from there and why because as we said that this bud looks very white look at this picture while the typical white tea from uh, uh, fooding looks rather green and uh, you have uh, a very clear contrast between the two that you cannot uh, you cannot make it wrong uh, if uh, if you know what you have to look at yeah so we said one thing is the sun drying and another thing is the appearance of the leaves or if you want the color of the leaves yeah. of course there are other differences as well um, besides the taste that we have also to speak about um, um, it is a different plant so we say this tea is made with the uh, jingsu Daba Cha, which is a, a Daie Zhong uh, cultivar, it means a cultivar of uh, the subgroup or the group uh, uh, big uh, leaf uh, variety. It's, um, it's a series of cultivar that uh, are usually coming from uh, the, the south, the southwest of China, uh, Assamica uh, in Europe if you want, that have larger leaves. So also the buds are a little bit larger usually than the buds for um, for the Yue Guanbai, sorry, for the for the fooding da bai cha, which is made with other kind of cultivar that are medium size or small size leaves. So Definitely more intense. Uh, you can say also um, by the color of the brew, it is uh, a, a dull, dark yellow. It um, it gives you a little bit of dryness on the top of the palate, uh, like uh, like some wine do. And uh, here now the um, uh, the hay, the wild hay taste comes out a little bit more uh, clear. I will keep on steeping them uh, stronger and stronger. This tea that is uh, uh, quite generous, so it is just three grams of leaves, and I'm pretty sure I can do five or five, uh, maybe four or five uh, uh, steeping out of it. I have to say that this uh, um, hay taste is quite long lasting, like while waiting for this other steeping, I still have this uh, hay note, uh, this wild note coming out of my throat. color very consistent with the previous one mm. a bit what? 
it's rounder now. Very, very similar taste profile with respect to the second steep. Second and third are very similar. Here it is a bit rounder. And there is, um, there is a note of something that I know. What was that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it goes in the direction of, you know what, of cooked bamboo. It's not very popular here in the West, it's very common in China and I remember actually, uh, well that was fooding, when uh, I, was, uh, I was there for uh, searching white tea that they were drying uh, uh, bamboo on the sun and um, yeah, it reminds me actually the taste of cooked bamboo which brings us back into the forest, so it has a lot of these uh, um, of this natural uh, vegetal taste, but there's nothing to do with the very um, uh, grassy and green vegetable. Uh, it's here is more, you have to go, as said, in the undergrowth, you have to go uh, in the direction of a little bit of mushrooms, uh, as we say, bamboo, cooked bamboos, um, hay, so a little bit warmer taste. And here maybe we come with um, to a last uh, difference with respect to um, fooding uh, bai cha is the taste. Uh, fooding bai cha has, uh, um, especially if we compare tea made with only buds with tea made with only buds. So uh, a, a fooding bai cha made of only buds has a very delicate and pure taste. While these, despite being only bad, is still a little bit rough and wild, so it depends which direction you want to go. If you want a very pure uh, taste, maybe not necessarily super complex, but pure and delicate, you go for fooding uh, uh, bai cha. And if you're searching a little bit of uh, wilderness and uh, rough taste, then uh, UA1 bai is definitely uh, a better choice. This is, uh, what is it, the fifth, the fourth, the fourth steep. Yeah. It's too hot, maybe. For a TCM uh, profile, a traditional Chinese medicine profile, I would say it is a rated warm tea. This is only from 2018, so it's uh, uh, as of today it is one and a half year uh, old, the leaves, and still it's, uh, it's very warming. If you take a one and a half year old uh, fooding by cha, it tastes uh, more fresher, it's a little bit more aggressive for the stomach as well. From him. From a basic taste profile, um, there is a lot of umami in it. It's definitely not bitter, and in fact, actually, it reminds a little bit of a sheng pu'er if you remove the bitterness out of it. There, uh, there are some commonalities, especially uh, these uh, mushroom notes and the fact that it is uh, fresh but not too much, so it has uh, these vegetable notes but uh, uh, rather uh, ripe. It's certainly something in common with pu'er. Yeah, umami is definitely the basic, the basic profile. Not bitter. It's not. Uh, it's not sweet. It's not sweet. Uh, the, the taste is it. So sorry, the the fragrance. No more now. But at the very beginning, when I was melting the lid and the cup, there was some uh, sweetness to it. But the taste is definitely not uh, sweet. Sour, sour, it has some slightly sour notes, but uh, very, very mildly, so it really reminds me of, um, of a piece of meat from the basic taste profile. All right, this is uh, the introduction I wanted to give you about uh, Yue Guan Bai. I hope uh, you have enjoyed watching the video, and if you made it to this point, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you're new here and you have enjoyed watching this video, subscribe our channel, and more and more videos like this will come your way very soon. I will see you next time, and for now, I wish you a very good uh, rest of your day. Bye-bye.